Okay, I don't know about you, but my heart rate is already into the danger zone. These are scenes from Top Gun Maverick, Mach 5 follow-up to the 80s classic Top Gun. It stars a returning Tom Cruise back in the pilot seat as Maverick, flying dangerously as ever under that call sign, peels back the original's veneer of Cold War politics, but keeps all of the high-speed excitement, or at least I think it does. I don't know. Will it have fans on the edge of their ejector seats, or does the plot fall into a flat spin. Have I taken all of your puns, Eli Glasner? <laughs> Can you tell that I, I have seen this movie a fair number of times? I think many members of my team have. I'm happy to be your wingwoman this morning. Oh, thank we, you. You we, sound we, eminently qualified oh. and very ready. Very I, I, ready. Well, I, I am ready oh, now. Oh, wait. Since oh, look, you've got, okay. you, come on now. There, well, you I, got the I, shirt. I didn't know you had you flight the experience. Shirt. <laughs> I you might have not flown the snowbirds. The Come on, up yeah, there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, right. like Mach so. five with my hair on fire, with my anchor hair on fire. <laughs> All right, carry on. It's your turn. Do we still feel the need for speed in 2022, Eli? So we catch up with Captain Maverick, Captain Pete Mitcher, call sign Maverick, and the movie starts Heather 30 years after the original original and we find him because he's kind of stubborn you know a little gets in his own way sometimes so he's just a test pilot now but he's pushing an experimental jet fighter never mind mach 5 past mach 10 with the sheer force of his cruising will but then he gets the call come back to top gun flight combat school not as a pilot not as a competitor they want him to teach. They want him to be an instructor for this new generation of elite fighter pilots. Now, to say the film strikes a reverential tone is like saying Cruz has a nice smile. Doesn't quite cover it. Let me give you a sense of the way the world orbits around him, beginning with Warrant Officer Hondo and a bit of an introduction. Your instructor is one of the finest pilots this program has ever produced. His exploits are legendary. So we see Cruz getting ready to go back to Top Gun school. We see him open his locker. We see him take out the jacket, you know, the jacket that every dad bought to try and look cool. And there he is with the jacket, with the sunglasses, getting on the Ninja motorcycle, bombing down the tarmac, big smile on his face as Hans Zimmer, the composer, cranks the soundtrack to 11. Like this. With all due respect, sir. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. This film is a smart bomb of nostalgia. It begins with the Kenny Loggins song, Danger Zone. Shots of jets roaring, almost as if the filmmakers are saying, we know why you're all here. Let's just get down to it. From the soundtrack to the sweaty beach sports to the synth pop pumping in the background, it is all there, incredibly obvious, heavy handed and effective like a hammer is effective. <laughs> I, I just, I'm just loving every one of these scenes. Um, listen, in terms of theme, I said I mentioned Cold War politics yeah. last time round. What about now? What about the story to this one? You know, what strikes me is just kind of how cynical this is in terms of just like the commercial appeal. It has been totally neutered of any geopolitical context in order to avoid offending any possible ticket buying region. Maverick's mission is to teach this new generation of pilots to attack a uranium enrichment facility. 
Where is it? I have no idea. The rogue state, the country in question, is never once man mentioned. All I can tell you is that the objective is hidden in a ring of mountains, protected by some deadly batteries of missiles, so Cruz has three weeks to teach the pilots who've never flown in serious combat to go very fast and very low. Now, the young hotshots all come with their own call signs and baggage. There's Hangman, who is selfish. There's Bob, who is the nerdy weapons guy. And then there's Rooster, and his problem is he doesn't know when to take the shot. He's too cautious. Well, listen to what Maverick says. You think up there you're dead. Believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not going to make the same mistake. There you go. That is what Maverick is fighting. It is not gravity. It's not the limits of human endurance. It's not the military industrial complex. He is battling the ghosts of the past. Rooster, played by Miles Teller, is playing the son of Goose, who died when Maverick's jet plane spun out those 30 years ago. Teller even resembles a young Anthony Edwards from 86, and the movie goes out of its way to really underline that connection. So Maverick is now wrestling with the responsibility of whether to risk the son of the friend that he lost on that uh, that he lost and should he risk him on this impossible mission Oh my goodness, drama and conflict. Listen, we know that when Tom Cruise makes a movie, he goes all in in terms of stunts and everything. Do you see that in this film? Does he is he uh, you know how is he? Is his body still writing? What is that line? Is his body still writing checks? Still writing his ego che can't cash? Or how, how is he in this one? I mean, as ever, Cruz, and especially the last decade, has been out to prove us prove to us that he is like the optimal human. And we also know that he is an experienced flight pilot. Now, for some reason, Heather, the military wouldn't let him fly actual F-18s. So they did the next best thing, finding a way to put the actors, those young pilots, in real fighter jets wedged behind actual pilots with IMAX cameras in front of them and jets with cameras following them to capture everything. And crews designed a five month training program giving them flight experience. And as you can see for yourself, things got uh, pretty intense. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Here comes some Gs. There's five Gs. Oh! Six Gs. Ah! Seven Gs. All right. That was awesome. <laughs> so you have these like young pub actors who are playing the pilots having like heart attacks. Then you have crews like, yeah, let's go again. This is great. And I really want to underline this, Heather. Like we are so accustomed to seeing computer generated action and spectacle on the big screen. But much of what you're seeing when you see the world swinging around them, like to the middle of this giant gyroscope, these mountains and desert dunes whipping by, that is actual footage that they have captured. I have some qualms about this film, but what they have accomplished just on a technical level is stunning. So oh, there he is talking about it there. So qualms about the film, is it because of Tom Cruise's performance or does he take your breath away again, Eli? I would not say he takes my breath away. I think that is what he is trying to do. But I think in his quest for perfection, he has lost a little something. It's interesting. Go back and watch the original Top Gun film like I did. What you forget is how dangerous Maverick seemed. Yes, Tom Cruise with his cocky kid in his, in his 20s, but there was a reason that Iceman played by Val Kilmer, who makes an amazing return in this movie, mostly mute because of throat cancer, but he does come back. But it's a reason that Iceman didn't trust him because that Maverick was hungry. He was reckless. He had something to prove. In the original film, Cruz had an edge. At 59 years old, Cruz is still risking life and limb, performing these incredible stunts and feats on film to convince us that he is the best, that he is the optimal human. And the movie worships him. But in doing so, it's kind of smoothed over some of those edges. Even Jennifer Connelly, as the old flame love interest, gives in to him with this sense of inevitability. The movie implicitly understands understands that Cruz can't fail, but in that drive for perfection, I think he's lost a little of what made him so relatable, so watchable, so long ago.
So four stars for the Jets, two stars for the for Cruz, and a couple stars for Val Kilmer's return. All in all, you get three and a half stars.